afternoon everyone good morning good evening good afternoon wherever you are ah oh, lovely that's my ipad just catching up fantastic hi hannah let me just get this popped underneath hi sam you okay josie josephine christine sylvia yana hi guys how are we all so you can see that i've made a little bit of a start don't panic i did the top the exact way that i'm going to show you the bottom and i've only done a test glaze on this little area so there's quite a bit to do hey christia you made it hi liz so you can tell being the consummate background dodger that i am that i have instantly reduced the amount of background to do by drawing a circle <laughs> So I've just drawn a simple circle with a compass. You can find the middle of your page just by using a ruler basically and going from corner to corner. A light pencil cross in the middle where these lines meet. The design is very slightly off centre but I've used the actual centre from where I've measured it from. So yeah, the compass looks familiar says Liz, yes it will do. I have another page that's on the go at the moment in another book and I'm using mostly the same colours for this background as I am in the other book. Hi Kay, hi Annette. So yeah, it does look familiar, that's because it is. I was having a dummy run yesterday. So ink tents today and Prismacolor. I'm going to show you guys the colour list just in case you didn't see the post that I put up earlier on. Hi Annie. Sylvia used a plate for her circle. Do you know what? The last time I used a plate for a circle, it was the wonkiest plate I'd ever seen in my life and I didn't realise till I'd drawn it. <laughs> Compass is only for me for now. <laughs> so here we go. We have the ink tense colours here. So if you're grabbing your pencils, this is the time to grab them. Morning, Sandra. Hey, Carol. So ink tense, apple green, vivid green, green aquamarine, iron blue and iron green and then of course we will be doing a prismacolor glaze so yellow chartreuse spring green parrot green aquamarine peacock blue indian throne blue and a little touch of dark green as well so i'm going to keep that there because i know some of you like to take a quick screenshot or grab your pencils and then we will get cracking so i hope you're all okay happy sunday everybody so just leave that there for another second or two and then I'm going to whip it away. Okay, going, going, gone. <laughs> so without further ado, let's crack on. Now I wanted to get a little bit of this done early this morning just so that I could have a bit of a test of the glaze over because you know I can't glaze it until it's dried. So I've only glazed this sort of area here. This, all of this bit is untouched. This is just ink tents. We're fine, thank you, Fran. Catherine's just away out for a little stretch of her legs. Hi, Angela. And she will be back shortly. So let's get going. I've got my glasses with me this week, so I'm gonna get those on. Now, the little marks are just guidance, really, for myself, just to decide where I'm gonna put my highlights and lowlights and things in. With pages like this, particularly where you're going to have, um, you know, very dark things like the toucan. If we do these guys in traditional black colours, you want it to be nice and light around there. So I've kind of plotted out roughly where I'm going to put some of these colours in before I've even started. So the first colour up is going to be this apple green. So for those of you just jumping in, this is Derwent ink tent that we're using first of all. So I'm going to zoom us in very slightly. And just get this slightly on the side and then let's start laying down some of these colours. So we're going to have a nice light area towards this middle bit. So you don't need an awful lot of pressure with these. Those of you that are very, very new to ink tents, a little bit of this goes a very long way. Because I'm going to be glazing though, I am going to press very slightly harder because I want a decent coverage of this on so that I don't have to do quite as much glazing. So where I'm going to be blending it into another colour, I'm just going to ease off on the pressure very slightly. Morning, Jada. So yeah, how are you all doing? What are you all working on? 
I've seen lots of lovely, lovely work um, in the group over the last few days. Lots of wonderful pages in Ivy and the Inky Butterfly, which have been looking fantastic. So we're going for symmetry here, so I'm going to be moving this around a little bit as I lay the colours down, just to try and get roughly even coverage on here. So because this is a mirror image, um, what I'm probably going to do with this one is um, work on half of the picture and then I can show you the palettes for the other half. Sianna's working on fragile worlds. Ooh, sounds fun. Very complex um, pictures, aren't they, in the Kirby books? They're beautiful, though. So I've given myself a little spring green mark in there as well. So let's just nudge a little bit of that up into the very edge of the flower area. Might just pop the tiniest little bit in here as well, just to graduate the other green into. So lots of people in different things. Afternoon, Sarah. So Hannah is in Fairy Miracles. I don't have that book. I really do want it. Jada's trying to get woke up. Don't listen to me then, Jada. That will send you right back to sleep. <laughs> Catherine's in Wingling Special by Colour in Heaven. Wow, loads of people are doing all sorts of different bits at the moment. Hiya, Donna. Yeah, I'm good, thanks, Jada. I hope you guys are all okay as well. So I'm going to try and carry on just nudging the colour into here. If I'm missing the odd comment, I'm so sorry. It's just because we've got so much ground to do on this book and I really do want to get the main ink tents down before we finish. There's Barbara as well. Hi, Barbara. So it's Josephine. A whip in four books. Good Lord. <laughs> That's a lot. I've got three whips at the moment, though, so I can't really... Uh, I can't really say anything, can I? <laughs> so into vivid green now. So vivid green. Hiya, Laurie. Samantha's in Europa. Yeah, I haven't done a single thing in that book yet, Samantha. I must stick it out. So with this vivid green, we're going to nudge this up into that apple green layer that we've just put down, first of all. So I can see from the toucan that I've done here that I've nudged a bit of that green aquamarine into here. So. I'm going to just nudge this down underneath the toucan's feet and around this frog. I'm kind of thinking that I want to do this frog maybe in greens and oranges, so I want a bit more of the bluey tones around this little guy. So I'll carry on adding this in around. Don is doing the Moonlight Castle again. Goodness me. <laughs> How many times have you done it now, Donna? Is this your third? If I'm remembering rightly, I can't think. There's a few people that are doing them. Um, Christy is here. She's doing the um, Alien Tree project at the moment. We've been having a bit of a giggle about that over on Instagram, haven't we, Christy? So funny. She put um, an Instagram story up a couple of days ago because obviously she'd been not part of the originally original live, I believe, but had been listening to the the commentary like obviously we've got now. So my friends over on YouTube that catch up on this later obviously don't have the benefit of seeing your comments on this side. And she said it was cracking her up. <laughs> Let's go back and re-listen to it. <laughs> it is your third. Oh, um, Barbara, I was looking at your picture from yesterday. It's looking good. So this is me just trying to work out quite where I'm adding. So I want the tiniest little bit of this nudged into the bottom here as well. And then definitely we've gone into... This one. Hi from Colorado. Which one is the Moonlit Castle? Um, that one. Which one is the Moonlit Castle? Because it was the dragon in the castle the last one, wasn't it? I can't think. Reminds me what the Moonlit Castle is. Is this the dragon one that I've just finished from Joanna's Archie project? I think. They all blur into one because I've done a few castles, haven't I? <laughs> sort of forget um, quite what I've been doing some of the time. You missed caught a few of the lives. Yeah, some of them were very, very funny. In fact, when I had um, a live, I think it was the live I did at the end of last year with Johanna, we were chatting about the, the alien tree one. That's it, the ET tree, Hannah. And um, one of our um, lovely mods from the admin team here in this group, um, she'd actually coloured Yoda in 
on that tree and um, I sent it to Joanna and she absolutely loved it. <laughs> I think the moonlit castle is the alien one. Everyone calls it different things. The ET tree, the alien tree. I think I called it the moonlight castle. I think you lot were came, coming up with something completely different. Yes, it was. It was in Worlds of Wonder, Josephine. Good morning, Gail. Do you want me to say chocolate for you now or later? <laughs> right, I'm going to speed up very slightly here. I'm thoroughly enjoying chatting with you guys. I'm getting so distracted. I'm not actually watching what I'm doing. <laughs> so I've got put myself a little a little mark under here as well. So I'm just going to get a little bit of this vivid green in under here. So I'm pressing reasonably firmly with this. I don't want to spend hours and hours glazing. I'd like to get a really good coverage of this ink tents on. So I'm going to give it a bit of a thicker layer really than I normally would generally. Um, just so it's less work really at the other end, that's all. So let me just see the circle that's coming around here. So we want to nudge maybe a titchy bit of the green into these little gaps under here as well. These little froggies are so cute. Chocolates as Gail. What colour am I using, Grace? I am using vivid green just now. Good morning, Stacey. And hello, Simone from Nova Scotia. Sunny Nova Scotia, no less. We've had a bit of a mix to bag today. We've had uh, some sunshine, but it's quite overcast as well. But it's not crazy, crazy hot, which is really, really good for me. I don't like it when it's crazy, crazy hot. So here we go. I'm just checking that I have done that as evenly as possible. And let's whip on to colour number three. So colour number three is green aquamarine. I nearly said aventurine then. That's a crystal name, not a pencil name. So green aquamarine. So when we're looking to colour match things that are going to go well together, the, all of the yellows, um, yellowy green colours, the greens, the blues, they're all on the same spectrum. So we've got yellowy greens going into almost a bluey green, definitely going into a bluey green, then going into a darker green. So when you're looking for colour matches, you can quite often just eyeball a good colour combo just from looking at your colour wheel and your swatching charts just to see which tones will go together. So these are a reasonably safe colour blend that I'm using for this one. We know that they're going to go together reasonably well. So I'm going to get some more of this beautiful colour into here. But yeah, we've all got so many projects coming on. Yay, Vivian's here. Poor Vivian, you missed Barbara's yesterday, didn't you? And then I changed the time of mine last week because we were having that ridiculously hot weather. And you missed it. I'm so happy to see you. So that's three of my lovely sisters that are here this afternoon. We've got Vivian and Barbara and Gail. Fantastic. So I'm just keep nudging that round. So while I've done one half, I'm just going to swoosh round and do the other half now. So we're taking this all the way around the froggy because I want this to be a wee bit darker. So I'm planning to use some... Um, some greens I think in this little guy I don't want to lose him in the background even though I'm sp I think they're supposed to kind of camouflage themselves a little bit these little dudes aren't they but I don't want to lose him in the background here so just thinking about my colour placement so that we don't completely lose him so let me just see so I've taken this up to roughly around this leaf area let's go medium to firm pressure we'll get a really nice thick layer of colour down and then the glazing goes a lot quicker. So what's Liz saying? Have I bought any more crystals on my travels? Um, yeah, Not since Stonehenge. So I bought a bracelet made of the same blue stone that the Stonehenge um, monoliths are made out of and it's fast become one of my most worn pieces of jewellery. Um, it's absolutely magical very very grounding so I'm just going to do a double check see where we're at here so I'm going to start to bring this around under here so we don't have gaps in these leaves so I'm going to start nudging this into this bottom area now so what's Fran saying I have both the blocks and the pencils I don't have the blocks I don't know whether I fancy the blocks um, as such I don't know whether I would possibly be a little too heavy-handed 
I think one of the bonuses of having these in a pencil is you can control a bit easier the amount of pressure that you're putting through them. I might be doing the blocks an injustice, but I think that I probably find these a bit would find these much easier to handle. I don't know. So let's start nudging this down as well. I think I'm probably going to put a little bit more green through this as well once I've got this base layer down just to uh, lighten the colours very slightly. Blocks are on my wish list, said Jada. I've seen that you can actually get the um, Derwin ink tents in sort of like a watercolour pan style as well. They intrigue me. I'm a bit of a coward when it comes to sort of actual paint though, so I don't know whether I would be brave enough to try them. <laughs> so what Stacey's saying, you're having a time with them bleeding through. Oh, Stacey, don't talk to me about bleed throughs. Honestly, the air was blue in this house last night. So my wonderful Caran Dash water brushes, my blue medium tip one, keeps flooding. I think there must be something wrong with the valve because my old one didn't definitely didn't keep doing that. So I've ordered two new ones. So in my brand new book, which is obviously a different book, which we won't go into details about because it's not appropriate being in this group. Um, my brand new book, I'd only had it for a day and I've had bleed through into the other page underneath. Absolutely heartbreaking. But I'm just telling myself it matters not. It just means that I will have to do some sort of background on the other side of the page or just live with the bleed through. So, um, yeah, bleed through is, is, a, is a bad word in this house at the moment. <laughs> so, let's see. Nudge a bit into there as well. What are the powers of the crystal? Yeah, very, very ground in. So, the Prizeli, it's called Prizeli Blue Stone and it comes from in the Welsh mountains. So, that is what Stonehenge is made of. And the beauty of this particular stone is, as well as having um, the properties of, say, darker crystals inside it actually has flecks of white as well so white quartz so it's a bit like an above and below stone so it works with your higher up chakras like the crown but it also works with your base and things as well so it i think i feel that it kind of connects you at both ends which is a really good thing so i'm finding it really really useful and i'm wearing it all the time in fact it's just behind me i'll grab it in a few minutes let me just scroll back because I know I've missed a few comments here. Catherine's good, thanks, Alexandra. She's just away for a walk at the moment. In the yes, in the book I got from my mum, I know. Gutted, but it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. So I'm just gonna nudge a wee bit more of this green aquamarine in under here, which means I need to nudge a bit more of it in under here. And then I'll go for my darker blues in a second. So I am going to just jump back on with the vivid green again, just very quickly. I'm just going to overlay the blue that I've already put down. So you can do this. You can lay your ink temps one colour on top of another. It's a really good way of adding bits of shading or just tweaking colours. I know that these are a safe colour match because we've got a green going into a greeny blue. So there should be absolutely no problems with me giving this the very tiniest of tweaks. There we go. So let's go into the darker blue now. So we have iron blue, iron blue. You can also do ground and by walking barefoot in the grass, you can. The only drawback of that is if you stand on a nettle, it can be a bit sore or a thistle, done both. <laughs> Slightly unfortunate. Right, I'm just going to have a quick sip of my juice. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend it on our grass. It's all brown and prickly. Yeah, so is ours. It's a shame. Right, I've just got my Stonehenge bracelet. I've just reached up on the cabinet behind me. I'll just show you it real quick. So I don't know whether the camera will pick this up. Yeah, do you see on that one there? A bit of white quartz in here. Really, really interesting stone, this Priscilla blue stone. And in there as well. But really, really lovely, lovely crystal bracelet. Beautiful. <laughs> right, back on with the glasses. So, iron blue is the next colour up. You're getting yours in December. Oh, Gail. 
it's just it's just a fantastic piece of jewelry so have we got a gap in here yes we have haven't we you know sometimes it can be quite hard to see these little gaps so this one's quite dark so less with this is definitely more I am going to be taking this one most of the way to the edge here, but I'm going to be using just a tiny little bit of the iron green as well. Let's have a look. Barbara's still colouring her lost and found page. And you're wondering if she'll finish it. Goodness me, of course you'll finish it. Absolutely, definitely. You will finish it because Johanna gave it to you. So you'll definitely finish it. I'm going to start on one of mine, I think, in a few days time, once I've finished up a couple of these other works and progresses that I've got. I'm trying to hold off, but I can't. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave the merest little line here for me to put the iron green into. Barbara's laughing. I wonder if I finish it, she says. Of course you're going to finish it. It came from Johanna. <laughs> You know you're going to finish it as well as I do, matey. <laughs> and that's why I can't resist doing mine as well. <laughs> I keep looking at it and thinking, I really want to do that sewing room. I really want to do that sewing room. So I'm going to just have to make it happen, aren't I? <laughs> that was such a good day. Right, so I'll keep nudging this down here. So I think... Think. let's see where the circles go in so I'm just going to grab my green aquamarine again I just want to nudge this down very slightly I'm also going to over blend into here just to put a bit of that greeny blue over the top of that iron blue 16 objects so far 24 left <laughs> Did it? Yeah, we had a wonderful, wonderful um, day, Alexandra. It was all terribly, terribly last minute for me. Um, I had other things planned that weekend. That's why I hadn't planned on going down. And then it was all such a rush. But yeah, it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So, so good. Gail wants to do the sewing room in black and white. Oh my God, that would look so cool. So, so cool. Oh, Barbara, you've seen Chantelle tomorrow. Do say hello to her for me. She's a lovely lady. Wonderful lady. Looking forward to the tea room type page. I'm looking forward to the Owl Post Office. Do you remember the page that she posted after, I think it was Evie had got poorly a few months ago with chicken pox, bless her. And she drew this Harry Potter inspired page for her. That's the one I can't wait to get my pencils round. So those of you following along with me just now, don't feel you have to go all in a rush and do all of these areas at the exact same time that I'm doing them. It's no harm at all in just watching. So I am blue and taking your time because when you're going with ink tents, sometimes you can make a big mess if you rush it. So just take your time. And then while we're waiting for the um, bottom area to dry off, I will show you how to glaze the top. Happy that we got to see her and other colouring friends. Yeah, me too. It was a fantastic experience. Um, me and Angela have already got another meetup planned in October, haven't we, Angela? Which I'm really looking forward to. Book statement because you're a busy bee. Yes, you are a busy bee all the time. But yeah, I don't know which page um, I'm going to do first when the book lands because, of course, we're only probably about five or six weeks away from publication now so it's not going to be long is it not going to be long at all so I'm just going to go spin this around the corner very slightly to keep going through on here so on the other side I have nudged this in over this leaf so I'm just going to do the same I seem to be using the uh, phrase stay within the lines loosely today as you can see I'm wobbling around all over the place but that's okay it'll get covered over when I colour it later. <laughs> but yeah Johanna's a, a lovely lady so don't forget you guys um, 1st of September 4 o'clock UK time so it's a Thursday 
I have got a live event with Johanna within this group and it's to celebrate the fact that we're nearly at 30,000 group members. Can you believe it? So if you have any questions that you would be interested in me putting to Johanna, I'm going to be putting a post up about it next week, I think, maybe a week before. I'm going to speak to the other admin girls about that just to get some input from you guys. So if you've got any questions about the new book or about all of these wonderful new hobbies that Joanna's been showing us in her posts, anything like that, let me know. I'm going to start collating them and then I will put them to her during the live. So I'm trying to get a list of things together. I'd like as many of you guys to be involved as we can. And you all know what the comments can be like. I, I find them very fast on here, but I know that when Johanna is with me live, the comments are gonna go a lot, lot faster and I'm probably gonna miss some of them. So if you do have any questions, start sending them to me and then I will get them collated. Make sure that we can involve as many of you lovely people as possible. So Iron Green is next up. Yay, Claire's here. Yay, Mrs H. Wonderful. That's nearly the whole admin team that are in. How wonderful. I just saw you sneak in on my phone there, Claire. I haven't seen you on my other screen yet, but I've just seen you on my phone. <laughs> but yeah, let me know. Any other questions that you can think of, send them to me in a message. Um, wait until I put the post up, hopefully next week, but just let me know. Hello to you as well, Claire. I'm so happy you're here. This is wonderful. I have a big beaming grin on my face which you obviously can't see, but you can hopefully hear it. <laughs> so just the tiniest smidgen of iron green around the edge here. So yeah, colouring royalty is in the house. Everybody say hello to Claire. She's joined us. This is wonderful. So I'll just keep nudging this on down here. So with this, I'm not going to press too hard because I don't want it to be too green at the bottom. I just want it to have a slightly different colour to the blue because we're going to have loads and loads of green on the leaves and things, aren't we? So I'm hoping to get this page finished up with you guys in over the next two weekends. So I will let you know, all being well or barring any disasters, I should be good for the next couple of Sundays. So don't be too shocked if you see half the page done because this is a mirror image page. So I will do one half and I will show you guys the other. <laughs> I like your uh, emoji, Claire, with the crown. That's cute. Or is it a tiara? <laughs> and if it's a tiara, I hope it's made of CMC glass because that would be beautiful. <laughs> now you have to sing happy birthday. Claire's still on her birthday week. Uh, Barbara, <laughs> can I just say that's not going to happen? <laughs> Whilst I can carry a tune, I'm not going to be singing it live. Oh my God, can you imagine? Claire would be like, it's fine, my birthday was the other day, I'm so over it now, stop singing Suzanne, it's horrific. <laughs> yes, Jada, I do have a YouTube channel. You can feel free to send me a DM and I'll gladly send you the details. So I'm just going to nudge back into the iron blue because I've just found a little nook and cranny here that I missed on the other guy. There you go, Alexandra's carrying me. You carry on singing, do it in type in for me. <laughs> yes sing live it's bad, bad enough when um we used to have a rendition of hammer time every time i got my sparkly pens out <laughs> oh dear okay so that looks like a toddler colored it but that is the beauty of ink tents because it will look really bright and cheerful like this half once we've water activated it so i'm just eyeballing it now just to see if I want to bring any of those lighter blues or greens slightly further down. So I'm going to just grab my vivid green and I'm just going to pop a bit more of it into this area here and under here just to bring a bit more of it down just slightly. So you can overlay these and they'll mix beautifully once we add the water. <laughs> Can't touch this as Liz, yeah don't get me started on that. The last, I think the last time we had a conversation about that, I actually started humming the tune. Um, that was a really good way to lose subscribers, just saying. <laughs> I love, you do love me for asking that, don't you, pal? Uh, Barbara, we'll discuss this later. <laughs> I'm 
I'm not singing live. This is a shocking idea. Oh dear, how funny. <laughs> right, a little bit of green aquamarine. I'm just going to smidge a bit of this into this very dark blue area down here as well. And then we will start activating. Let me just scroll back. I think I've lost a couple of comments here. Albert Dura, um, Barbara knows about those because you have those pencils, don't you, um, Barbara? I don't have those, Simone, so I'm not too sure. I would say that they would do the job because they're pretty pigmented. I don't think you would go too far wrong with them, to be honest. Barbara's laughing. Right, let me just uh, sort my nose out. I've got terrible hay fever today. Carol says, I'm not fast enough to keep up. We'll work with it on playback. Yes, do that, Carol. Don't try and uh, keep up with me. I'd rather you enjoyed it, had a chat with us, and then we're happy with your page rather than rushing it. Suzanne and I need a private conversation, says Barbara. Yes, we do. Sorry I'm late, says Michaela. No worries, you're absolutely fine. Okay, so you will all know from watching me do this normally that my favoured brush are the Caran d'Ache ones and usually the blue tip. This thing is being fired into the bin at the earliest opportunity and I have ordered two new ones because I think that there is a problem with the valve here because last night it was flooding and I had really unfortunate leakage on another page I was doing. So for the firstest ever time, I'll be using my black tip, which is the large version. So I'll just show you them side by side so you can just about see the difference there in sizes. Now, this does go to a really, really nice tip anyway. So, I don't know why I was only using the blue one before. I think I've just got trapped into it, to be honest. Um, but it's going to be the black tip that I'm using now. So, I'm just going to get this guy moving again. And I'm hoping we're not going to have any flooding. So, you just need the most gentlest nudge on this valve before the water starts flowing. And it's a one push too many situation because you can either get the brush slightly too dry or flooding. So I'm hoping that he's going to behave. Ice cream time. That's the estate over the back of us, Liz. Um, he's not been to the front of the house yet. Darlene says, so happy I stumbled across this. I needed to see someone using ink tents. Goodness me, Darlene, I'd better use them well then, hadn't I? Be terrible if I just make a big green and blue mess now, won't it? <laughs> concentration time so um, as with everything I do with ink tents when we're blending you're far easier to blend your light colors into your dark colors because if you don't you're not going to get the nice color blend change you're just going to drag this dark pigment into your light and your light's going to become dark so that's the first tip right what's Sandra saying is it vivid green after apple green yes it is apple green first then vivid green Really did know that, Barbara, but good to know, oh dear. <laughs> what for missed? I'll have to scroll back for that one. So I'm just going to start tweaking these. Yeah, you're not blobbing on me. That's good. So blobbing or blobbage, that's the technical term when these silly brushes decide that they are not going to cooperate with you. We have blobbage. So with this, um, I've found to get a nice mottled look instead of doing long lines if you kind of just dab the page you can move this pigment around and of course it sits well it dries where it lands is what I was trying to say so you just grab a bit of that darker pigment and you can just dot it in wherever you want it to be and then it will stay where it lands wish list growing fast Oh, what have you got on your wish list? I've just put a bunch of stuff on my wish list, actually, Barbara. I'm interested in these distressed inks, but I can't decide if that's going to be an absolute disastrous um, interest that I'm going to have in these distressed inks in terms of murdering backgrounds or if it's going to be a good move. Not sure. We'll see. <laughs> so I'm just... Oh, now he's in my street. Oh, damn it. I'm closing my ears. I'm not hearing that right now. I'm trying to rediscover my waistline, not pad it out further. <laughs> so I'm just going to move from light to dark 
So, make minor 99, says Claire. Tell you what they do do, our Claire. They do these, um, like, mobile phone shaped nugget filled chocolate wafer things. So you have two of them and she puts about that much ice cream in between and then she has a Biscoff sauce that she puts over the top. It's no wonder, is it, that um, I'm insulating myself for all weathers, even in the hot weather. <laughs> Jada says, I need, I need a sugar daddy if I'm ever going to complete my wish list. Oh, that's funny. One vanilla chocolate ice cream for me, please. I'm sure Gail would want a chocolate ice cream with chocolate sauce and a chocolate flake because she likes the sound of chocolate. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Is the fan as out of tune? Um, this one's not too bad, actually. We did have one that sounded like the needle was stuck on the record, actually, the other day. Um, but yeah, our regular one is, is quite tuneful and uh, quite in tune. Chocolate Supreme. Oh, yes, the, the Feast, says Fran. Yeah, one of them. That's pretty much chocolate everything, isn't it? Apart from the stick. <laughs> right, Suzanne. Less looking at these wonderful comments and more painting. I can't stop looking. Like the idea of distressed inks, but I'd get stressed with them. That's how I think I would be. I'd probably try and do a live with them for you guys, and I'd be like, I'm calling this live How to Become Distressed with Distressed Inks. Or Stressed with Distressed Inks. <laughs> Funny. Right, so let's nudge this along. So I'm kind of. I'm I'm using sort of linear strokes just against items, but I'm just moving this pigment wrap pigment even <laughs> round with little uh, little dobbing motions. Let's call it dobbing motions with this brush. So as you can see, even in these tiny wee areas here, it's going to start tinkling again in a minute. It's just pulled out the street, and it will probably be loud because I have the French doors behind me open just now. So uh, it's probably going to get real loud in a minute because it's going around the back. A chocolate stick if it was possible. God, yeah. Oh, told you that was going to be loud. There we go. And I'm just, while I've got enough green on my brush, just going to do that little, little area there underneath the frog. Karen, move to Texas and misses Mr. Whippy ice cream. I tell you what, Karen, I would swap you in a heartbeat for... Walgreens, CVS, Blix, Borders Bookstores, um, I'm trying to think what else, <laughs> and everything grape, as Gail knows, because Gail sent me a parcel of grape stuff um, just a few weeks ago, actually, which I'm still enjoying now. Love America so much. So I'm just going to go underneath Mr. Toucan, so it's a little bit underneath his, his foot there, I'm not going to try and squeak this water brush into it. I'm going to wait until I've got the pencils to do the glazing layer and just nudge it in there. I might have a little go at that one though because that's a bit of a bigger gap. There we go. Beautiful. Michael's. Hell yeah. Love Michael's so much. So while we're over this side, let's start having a little look at this side. So I'm just going to go nice and steady in this bit. Cheesecake Factory, I've not tried a Cheesecake Factory. I'm trying to think of that, what's that ice cream brand that I tried when I was in Canada? I want to say Mike and Ike's but I don't think that's the right one. Hmm. I'm sure somebody will correct me, what? No, Baskin Robbins, that's the one. Mike and Ike, that's sweets. Dear oh dear. So let's carry on merging these colours together. So we've got this green aquamarine, a nice blue tone with a greeny element to it. Really nice lead into this iron blue, which is a much darker blue. Girardelli. Yeah, Girardelli's. Oh, we've been in the, uh, in the store in San Francisco. It was wonderful. And I think Girardelli's had a nice store as well in... Um, Orlando. I'm trying to think what that what that Disney shopping place is called. Oh, Carol, you'll know. What's that Disney shopping place called that's part of a Disney complex? Downtown Disney, I wanted to say. I think. I'm sure that was where we went into uh, one of those shops. 
Mike and Ike's candy. Yeah, I got muddled up. I'm sure it was Baskin Robbins. The light cream on the page. Are we talking about the Albert Durer? I've seen it, Barbara, you've used your um, Albert Durer as well with your Inktense pencils, if I remember rightly. You know, on your um, that Worlds of Wonder page where you did like the, the play school farm building. I'm sure you mixed them. Yeah, Downtown Disney. That's it, Angela. I'm like, Carol, you'll know because you're Florida way. Carol's put three question marks up. <laughs> Sorry, Carol. So we're going to start encountering a bit of that iron green in a minute or two. So again, any areas where you get slightly sort of almost blonder areas really of the pigment, you can just use your brush to smush this around a little bit and any areas that look a little bit patchy, it doesn't matter when we do the glaze over layer, that will resolve all of that anyway. Have I ever visited DC? I have not, no, but I would love to visit DC. I think the next time we come to the States, we will probably be going East Coast, New York, Boston, I would say, potentially. Um, but I think we will be waiting until things are a little bit less bonkers in the world before we go quite that far afield again, unfortunately. So I've given the valve on my water brush a little bit of a squeak there because things were just drying up. It's just slightly too keen at the moment, which is why I'm removing the brush out of shot. I'm just using a piece of kitchen towel just to blot the water. If you can spot it early enough with these brushes when they're starting to go a little bit water blobby, you can usually avoid bleed through on your other page unless you have a brush that's behaving as badly as my blue tipped one did. Let's have a look. Antoine asks if the ice cream truck is here or at your place. <laughs> he comes to our estate um, pretty much every day at roughly the same time. We don't have one every week um, when he comes. But yeah, it's a, it's a lovely ice cream truck. Really friendly, really friendly ladies. I'd love it. All the stores I've mentioned. Oh, when my mum was in... Uh, New York just um, prior to pandemic and um, she went into a Blix. Now I hadn't heard of Blix before, certainly not the last time I was in the States anyway and I was slightly heartbroken but she did bring me some Prismacolor back so I couldn't complain too much. <laughs> but yeah, Washington DC, I would love to go there. I want to see the Capitol building and everything, that would be so cool. Don't think the bonkers in the world is going to end anytime soon. I know it feels like that at the moment, doesn't it? Right, I'm going to scooch around and go back to some of this lighter area. So I'm just going to make sure that my brush is nice and clean. So I don't want to drag the dark pigment over here. Send him over, Barbara. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's still buzzing around. I can hear him in the background. So same again. So the brush is just dried a little on me. So I'm just going to give the valve the smallest little tweak in the hopes it will wake up and not over wake up yeah we're doing okay this time how are we doing for time not too bad so i've started to smush the green aquamarine layer in here so i'm just gonna use the pigment use the brush to move the pigment around a little there we go brush is woken back up and oh, flipping egg stop blobbing on me it's very annoying honestly the things we talk about on stream so funny so I'm just going to blob that around a little bit and then let's go under here. So every time I'm looking for where the lightest area of my pigment is and that's where I'm starting off with the brush. So any areas that you, you miss or slightly undercook, that's what the glaze over layer is, is good for. Because you can correct that, of course, with the dry pencils over the top. Well, that's a beautiful bluey green. I'm liking that a lot. Love the intensity of the smallest little push and you'll be a costume of a woman. <laughs> oh dear. How, how much stock do you own, Yana? What are we talking about now? Have I missed comments again? <laughs> or is, is this art materials we're discussing? 
I'm not sure. Loving the gradient value, says Laurie. Thanks. Oh, I'm nuts. That will be sparkly now. <laughs> or coloured over. <laughs> it's me getting carried away with the brush. That's a good job that one of uh, Joanna's mottos is go outside the lines if you want to, because I seem to do that on most pieces. Alexandra, I'd trade a Blick for a Colt Pens or a WH Smiths. Oh, I know, WH Smiths is wonderful. It's funny, actually, because since I work from um, home the majority of the time now, I used to spend a lot of time in the town centre, sort of on my lunch breaks, wandering around. And the amount of times that I would be in WH Smiths getting very strange looks from the staff, because I'd be like, I'm just going to nip in and just check that you have exactly the same stationery as you had the last time I was in this shop just on the off chance that you may have got something new and or move the shop around. So I'd go in for sort of like the odd pen and then the rest of the time I'd be browsing for bargains and things. It's so funny. I hardly go in there now. <laughs> but yeah, I was like a, a store stalker. So this pen has just got hysterical on me again. Stupid thing. So that's kind of a sectioned off area. So I'm going to carry on under this bit because I don't want to get loads of watermarks everywhere. So just pick up a bit of that blue. That's called taking inventory, says Carol. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> taking inventory and or finding something that you want to buy and um, taking half the shop even though you actually don't need to. Terrible. I actually have a new pencil case arriving this afternoon, um, courtesy of wonderful Amazon. So these are Amazon warehouse um, bargain deals that we've been talking about um, where, you know, people have sent stuff back or just changed their mind or whatever. I've managed, so my favourite brand of bags is Kipling. I absolutely adore them. And they had a Kipling pencil case in their deal things. And it was 17 quid instead of 38, so I thought I'm having you. So I've got a second one of them coming this afternoon. Catherine's like, I'm sure that, haven't you got one of those? And I'm like, no. Is that not the one that's sitting next to you on the sofa? No, of course it's not. Oh, she's seen it. So, um, yeah, bless her. She's like, do you need a second one? I was like, I really do, because it's a bargain. <laughs> So yeah, I've got another, I use it as like a, a project pencil case. So if I've got more than one page on the go, to be fair, it will be handy to have a second one. So um, yeah, I have another pencil case coming this afternoon. So this is obviously more of the same. So do keep chatting to me. What is Kipling, lol, says Jada. Oh, Kipling just do the most amazing bags ever and pencil cases and wash bags they're just wonderful right i'm going to move into slightly bigger circles now because we're blending a bigger area so when the areas get bigger it's a bit hard to kind of keep your pigment even well i find it hard to keep the pigment even so the pencil glazing um covers a multitude of sins and saves you having to add a second layer of the ink tents over because I don't mind it when the page goes all sort of wonky donkey and stuff. Um, but if I can get away with it, I prefer to just use one layer of ink tents and then glaze. So the glazing layer can be done with any brand. Um, I'm just going to use my Prismacolor because that was what was to hand when I was sorting the colours out earlier on. But um, yeah, so if you get any uneven areas or you don't quite get into any of these little nooks and crannies with your brush or whatever, the pencil glazing layer is really, really hem helpful. It's like little areas like this. Um, I either obliterate the leaves by accident or I don't quite get to the edges of them. So anything like that you can mess about with when you do the glaze over at the end. So while this bit's dry and we'll turn it upside down and I'll show you that. Fab bag brand, says Fran. Yeah, they so are. So my other Kipling pencil case is next to me at the moment and it, I think it holds, right, stop blobbing your thing. 
It holds about 100 pencils, it says, um, but the reason that I like it is, I'll show it to you in a minute, it has like a, a big section underneath and then two sections for your pencils with like um, like banded rows for them. Me and Barbara have actually got the same Kipling pencil cases, haven't we, Barbara? Because um, a lady sent them to us as a, as a gift. So, um, yeah, this is like bright pink. The other one that's come in is like blue and grey, which I figure will be better because you kind of do accidentally draw on them a bit when you pull in your pencils in and out and stuff. But the pink one's dead cute. I'll show it to you so you can see in a minute or two. So we're getting into the darker blues and everything now. So of course, while this is wet, you can maneuver this pigment around really wherever you want it to be. Where it ends up sitting is where it dries and remains. So I'm just gonna use the opportunity to sort of dot a bit of this about wherever I'm wanting it to go really. And then we will smooth this out with the glazing over layer. So I'll get going on this side as well. So I'm thinking the rest of this page is going to probably be done. I don't know whether I'll do more of it in ink tents. I might do. I'll see how I feel. Right, that's getting a little bit too dark there. So I'm just going to blot and remove. So I have a piece of kitchen paper just in this hand here. So every time you see the brush disappearing, I'm just blotting on here, as you can see you can move the pigment around, lift it off the page, of course, while everything's still nice and wet. So I'm just going to blot and then just blend that line out very slightly. And then start again. Down here, so we're going to start to pick up this iron green layer at the very edge here now. So try and be just a little bit more careful with what I'm doing at the edge of this circle. So the pen that I've used to draw the circle with is the um, Unipin fine liners in a point two, and they seem to be waterproof. I've never had a problem with the, the, the black pen mark actually um, sort of dissolving. Jada, I have to chuckle every time you say kitchen towel. You do, what do you guys call it then? <laughs> That's what we call it in the UK, it's kitchen towel. <laughs> I don't know what you guys call it. It's funny how we all um, speak the same language but have different uh, words for things. What do you call it where you are? So we just call it kitchen towel. So I'm just going to do the old blob and remove. Paper towels. Ah, see, in the UK, paper towels are something slightly different. They are the firmer, thicker towels that you use in the ladies' room. Um, so they, they would be paper towels, so the ones that you dry your hands on when you've used the bathroom. And we just call them kitchen towels, um, which is weird because it's more of a tissue type um, texture, I guess. But yeah, just bought the Sakura Jelly Roll. Yes, they do work on Prismacolor. They absolutely do. I used them on that Galaxy page that I put into the admin chat yesterday. They worked okay. So I'm going to just finish this little section off here because I'm mindful of the time. And then we're going to do some um, pencil glazing over the top because we're just about to hit the hour and um, I don't want us to run out of time. So the pencil glazing that you see me do on the top of the page is obviously going to be the same for down here. And how much pressure and how much of each colour you have to use will depend on really how much of the pigment you've uh, you've dropped down in different areas and if you've got places where you might need to push a little bit harder, that kind of thing. Maybe a napkin. Yeah, maybe so. Use the outliner from the ink tent set. Yeah, I haven't actually um, done that, Fran. I wanted it to be more of a black outline, so I went for the pen. But yeah, I found out the um, the hard way that the ink tent outliner pencil is not water soluble because I tried to activate it. <laughs> of course, it wouldn't activate. <laughs> I was like, oh, Suzanne, dear, oh dear. If you had a brain, you would be very dangerous. Call it kitchen roll. Yeah, we do as well. Jada, I love listening to UK accents, but some words baffle me. <laughs> That's funny. 
you guys all like listening to us and we like listening to you. It's like Gail with the chocolate thing. You like the way I say it, don't you, Gail, for some reason? It's, um, it's a thing. So I'm just going to try and be a bit careful under here. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, I, I love uh, an American accent, Canadian accent. Fantastic. Oh, Maggie's here as well. Goodness me, this has been a good afternoon this afternoon. All of my important people are here. This is wonderful. How's lovely Maggie this afternoon? Well, I hope. Right, let's just scree this to the edge. There we go. And I'm just going to block that in slightly. So I'm not going to activate um, this little third here or finish this later on off screen. Let's crack on and do a little bit of the glazing, but I am going to have a little sip of my juice real quick. So I'm going to unzoom slightly. Now we need Bev in capitals, says Alexandra. We do, but she's probably in church. She might jump in in the next half an hour, I would think. I have just noticed an arachnid in this corner. I swear to God, if that moves, there will be a me-sized hole in the wall. Thankfully, it's not the size of a Jack Russell. This one's more like a small cat. Oh my God. Right, I hate spiders. So let's zoom in again. 23 objects left. Ah, Barbara's colouring at the same time. Good to hear. So let me refresh your memory to the Prismacolor list again. So let me unzoom slightly. Hi, Cheryl. Welcome to the party. We're having a lovely time, bigger than a dinosaur. No, it's quite a small one to be fair, but um, you know, when you've just seen them and instantly think of pending doom. Right, here we go. This is your Prismacolor list. Stop laughing, you lot. I see you, Annie. <laughs> so these are our Prismacolor overlays. I'm just gonna leave that there a second so you can take a screen snap. Hopefully grab them out of your cases. There we go. It hasn't moved in the last two seconds, so we should be okay. Ooh. Honestly, we had a right instant in our house the other night with a spider. It wasn't funny at all. Ooh. It aged me about 52 years. So I'm going to spin this upside down uh, because I've already glazed this little area in here. So I'm going to start working from this middle bit outwards. I see you lot laughing. Stop laughing. <laughs> so yellow chartreuse is the first one that we... Uh, we're going to be going on with. Glad Catherine could save you. So it was about 20 past 10. We just finished watching the latest episode of um, Love Island USA, as you do. And we were about to go up to bed and we went to put some dishes in the dishwasher in the kitchen. And in the corner between the sink unit and the dishwasher was one of those enormous house spiders and I'm talking the big hairy ones, massive fangs, hisses at you, wears like a cape just to really modify the fr level of fright it gives you, that kind of thing. It was like wielding a sword, everything. So I shot up the stairs. Catherine got one of those like dusters on an extendable thing, opened the pole, thwacked it, went to pull it out from the side. She went one way, it went the other, then we couldn't see it. And I was like, you must be joking, I'm never setting foot in this kitchen again, we have to find this thing, I'm actually gonna die. And then it came belting out from the other side of the kitchen near the freezer, and luckily she caught the thing and put it out, but dear Lord, was it big. <laughs> That's massive. <laughs> What's our Claire saying? Literally using a dash luminance, malachite barrel, light malachite and spring green. Oh, Claire, I love that light malachite colour it's so nice it was brandishing a sword as well Angela not just a cape it was terrible and it was like it was like rocky it was just terrible <laughs> so I'm concentrating this into the areas where I just want these very lightest bits of that apple green to sort of zing out I'm not going to use very much of this at all really just in a couple of the uh the key areas and then I'm going to switch straight into spring green so mine's a little tiddler which should be in a pencil extender but I'm just going to keep going 
What's Jada saying? I'm sure my neighbours are enjoying my loud laughter. It wouldn't be the first time that I've been told that I've been uh, causing a lot of hilarity on one of these live streams. What can I say? When I was doing one of my things live and um, one sort of wandered into the lounge and Catherine was catching it, that was nearly the first time that I F-bombed on live on air. I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. No, it hasn't moved. Good. See you later, Maggie. Take care. So into spring green. So with the glaze over layer, I'm not aiming to obliterate the ink tents. I'm just aiming to smooth it out very slightly. So it's very, very light pressure. So to show you how light it is, if I was putting a decent amount of pressure through the pencil, we'd be getting that much colour. The amount of pressure that I'm putting over this ink tents is whisper, whisper soft. So very, 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 very gentle. I'm also using the pencil more on the side. If we use the tip, it's a lot harder to concentrate where you're putting the colour down. If you use the side and get a nice flat blending edge, it becomes a lot easier to get a managed graduation of colour over the top of something. So I'm going to be using it on the side. The one that grew says Liz, that's the one. Gargantuan. The one that was in the kitchen the other night was like um, apocalypse level huge though. It was really bad. So let's nudge this into these lightest areas. So I'll just smooth over in here as well. So I haven't glazed in this bit when I did the uh, the trial bit earlier on so I can start to uh, get both of these areas to meet up now. The one that grew, that's cracked me up. So I'm going to switch over now into parrot green. So 1006 parrot green. And again, using the pencil on the side. And any areas where you haven't quite got the water brush in, we just need to push a bit harder just to get everything a bit more even. Just put a bit more pressure through the pencil. But again, using this on the side so that we don't have those awful stop start marks everywhere. I'm not aiming for it to completely change the way that the ink tense is looking. I just want it to be slightly smoother than it is already. So I'm going to push a little bit harder in there because that's a little bit patchy. I love what we're saying about luminance. They haven't got a lot of greens. Yeah, the ones they do have are really nice. There were some nice colours in the extension box that they brought out the what was it 20 or 25 new colors or something i want to say a couple of cracking colors in there but that um, light malachite one in the luminance range is, is a beautiful beautiful color so i'm just going to grab the spring green again just to neaten this area up a little bit there we go i can hear movement i think Catherine may be on the way downstairs to do coffees. I definitely hear her. So let's carry on working on this side, so I'll spin it round slightly. So little areas like this where I've either gone completely over the line or not quite up to it. We can just use the tip of the pencil to nudge that colour in. And then I'm just going to keep switching through. Just anywhere that we need to blend that in a bit better. Yep, yeah, she's definitely making a coffee. I can hear cups coming out on the worktop. This is good. Let's spin round again. So is it too late to write questions? No, Michaela, it certainly isn't. So the live event is going to be on the 1st of September. So not next week, the week after. So I will put something out in the group. Um, probably next week Thursday just to invite you guys to submit questions because I want as many of you guys to be involved as possible it's the whole reason that we have arranged this is to celebrate nearly being at 30,000 group members so no you can pop them into the events tab as a question as a comment you can send me a direct message um, with any questions and I will collate all of them between now and then and uh, ask as many of them as I can in the time that we have because of course she's a very very busy lady um, with her 
her little ones to look after so I'm gonna have to make sure that I uh, go some to get as many of them in as I can do. I hiccups too says Liz, yeah you definitely definitely do. So grabbing my next darkest colour now, so a little bit of aquamarine. So it's just a case of eyeballing from your swatching charts the colours that are closest to what you've got on your page here. So I just had a little look to see what shades would overlay what I've already put down and these were the ones that were the closest matches. So again, nice and gentle pressure with this and it just evens everything out nicely. So I'm going to transition into that peacock blue and Indian throne blue in a second. But yeah, ask them in the event, send me a message, it's all good, whichever, and I will get them all collated together. So a little bit of peacock blue and also Indian throne blue. So I'm going to nudge in with the Indian throne blue first. So I just want to smooth out the edge here. There we go. And then the same in here. It's just nice and gently. So we can get these two to sit nicely together. It's possibly a little bit needed down in this corner as well. There we go. So peacock blue now. And this just sits really, really nicely over the top of this ink tense layer. Smooths it out a little bit. So you get some of those pesky watermarks. So if your water brush is behaving like a complete plank, like mine was uh, yesterday when I was using it, you can cover a multitude of sins just by doing this glaze over layer. Oh yeah, the coffee machine's going. So I don't know what I'm going to get. She will surprise me with the syrup, I'm sure. There we go. So let's nudge into this bit now and get this tidied up. So I'm not going to go in with the um, chartreuse or the spring green layer in here because we haven't quite got those tones. I am just going to use um, this just to tidy up in these little spaces here where, of course, they're too small to get the uh, the brush through. Well, if you're um, a little bit cat-handed like I am, they are anyway. <laughs> so, parrot green. Oh, there's Moira just dropped in. Afternoon, Moira. So, a bit of parrot green. Again, just smoothing out these areas, nudging that pencil into these gaps where we've not quite got the water brush in. Oh, that coffee smells delicious. Yum, yum, yum. So on with aquamarine now. So nice and gently. So when you're doing this glazing layer, just go steady. It's, you can build the colour up easily. It's very, very difficult to try and tone something down again if you've just gone in a bit too heavy handed with it. So area like this where I've got watermarks and like this where I've not quite got into the edges you can just use the edge of that pencil just to tidy that up. You missed all the coffee orders, they had so many orders. Oh, I know you've missed them all. Can I swap you? I'll use this now, thank you very much. What have I got? Glazed donut. Glazed donut? Yep, yeah. thanks. Let's give it a little stir. Mm. Oh, that's good, thank you, babe. Mm. Right, back on with the glasses. Yes, I'm well, thanks, Moira. Where are you? Love these colours. She's gone again, Alexandra. <laughs> She's disappeared again, bless her. The bringer of coffee drinks has disappeared. So, on with the peacock blue now. So same again, we're just nudge into these edge bits where we haven't quite made it properly with the brush. This area is kind of patchy like the bottom of the pages. This will just smooth it out really nicely. So a little bit more um, pressure on there just to even this out a bit better. 
think you can you can use other things like um, soft pastels as well to even out your ink tense layers. I don't like getting the mess of pastels though. I much prefer to use use pencils. So if you've got slightly uneven layers like this one, just put a bit more pressure through. Just evens it out that bit better. So I'm gonna go in with the Indian Throne Blue now. Had a gas man. You need a new boiler. Oh no. That's not good. So I just build this uh, this colour up, get this a bit a lot more even than it's looking at the moment. So there'll be a lot of work needed at the bottom of the page as well to get um, that looking a lot, lot smoother. really don't want to go back in with another layer of ink tents because it's just going to make the page really really wobbly. Prisoner layers so nicely. Yeah it does layer nicely over. Um, you can do this with any pencils but the beauty of the Prisma colour is they're nice and soft so you know with a little bit of um, decent pressure on the pencil you can nudge it into. I mean th this paper is quite smooth there isn't really tooth to it as such um, but it just lets you uh, nudge these very very soft waxy pencils into any of these lighter areas where you may have got into a bit of a mess with the ink tents or maybe not pushed as hard when you put in the the dry pencil layer down first and sometimes it can look like you've put a nice even layer down when actually you, you really haven't at all so i'm going to grab my dark green is that you Yes, another little shorty. So dark green, 908. In fact, I'm going to need my pencil extender for this little dude because he's a bit too teeny for me to use comfortably in my hands. So let's just get him hooked up. No, I haven't, Yana. I, I've never used um, markers in any of my colouring before. In fact, I don't have markers. Um, the only sort of pens I have are my glittery ones and my fine liners. So I'm just going to smudge this up into that end and throwing blue. And push a little bit harder towards the edge so that we define the line of the circle a wee bit more. There we go. And that I haven't activated, so I'm going to leave that little bit alone. So that's um, dry ink tents that I have I've activated this side, but not this side. There we go. How long have I been a colourist, says Grace? I started colouring when I was a very little girl. And then I didn't start colouring again until I was about 35, I would say. So about seven years now so let me just spin this the right way around and give it a critical look i think i need to just blend this little bit in slightly better in here so i'm just going to grab the peacock blue again i just want to um blend that in properly there we go, it's all these little nooks and crannies and then you get tied up with another area and need to go back and tweak a bit that you were halfway through before. <laughs> so let's um, do a little bit of this lighter bit under here now that this is all dry. So yeah, been colouring again for yeah probably about seven or eight years now. So yellow chartreuse. I'm going to give a nice pop of that in here because I want this to stand out in the middle. So I'm going to keep cycling the pencils that I'm using now rather than uh, using the same one on lots of areas because I don't want to keep missing things. So into spring green now. So 913 spring green. And I think we'll have a bit of parrot green in the edge bit just there. So yeah, a little while now. But it's funny, there's lots of, um, we've got lots of newbies in the group at the moment, which is lovely to see that have only started really recently, which is lovely. Um, 
it's such a, a wonderful hobby to have for your well-being and things. Really, really. The look I've just given this pencil has wilted it into a million pieces. <laughs> so I'm going to just use when this happens, um, you know what Prismas can be like. This is a Faber-Castell Trio pencil sharpener and I just start to use this side for a couple of rounds of sharpening. It just changes the shape of the tip very slightly and it usually stops it from uh, another repeat breakage. So I'll just show you the difference. Um, so you see it makes it a bit more stumpy. So it just um, usually will stop. So I'll just give it a little test. Yeah, we're rock solid again now. But yeah, um, so many people of different ages that have fallen in to cut into the colouring community. Um, you know, people of all ages, kids, um, you know, grown ups, grannies, grandfathers, aunties, uncles, lots of people. And it's just so good for your well-being. Um, I think sometimes um, as human beings, we probably put a bit too much pressure on ourselves when we're colouring because we want to strive for perfection. So I saw somebody um, earlier on who was commenting about uh, a new, it's a different illustrator, so I won't mention names of books just now, but a book that I've recently got um, and is worried about starting colouring in it because of ruining the pages. Uh, and like I said, you know, the one I did last night, it bled through. I've already ruined a page in a brand new book. I was slightly peeved, um, but in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. I will just do have to do a background or something to cover up the little wobble that my water brush had. But, you know, I think if you take yourself back to how you felt if you coloured when you were a kid and how free that you felt and, um, you know, not overthinking which colours you're going to use and how you're going to colour something, you just open up a whole world of well-being for yourself. It's just such a wonderful hobby to have. Opens up a new world, Sister it does. Barbara glues her tips. I know, I've never I've never glued my pencils. I just keep uh, putting them in and out of these. So my littlest, tinkiest one I'm using at the moment on another page is my, my Prussian green. And he's just about at the point where we'd have uh, one of Barbara's retirement ceremonies on this little dude. Because he's just getting too, too teeny tiny to keep putting through the sharpener. <laughs> but yeah, it's a wonderful hobby. And I wouldn't have met all of you wonderful people doing this if I hadn't been doing this so yeah it's been good so swapping back into that parrot green again so against here where I tried to be careful to not bleed into the frog I'm just going to push a bit harder to get the colour up to the edge of that line there and the same under here I might darken this in just a shade actually so that we've got a more of a, a balanced colour transition going around here well-being and expense yeah definitely that's the thing isn't it you um you see somebody using something and it really inspires you and then you're like i really need to have that and then you end up spending a blooming fortune and we wouldn't have met you says carol i know and vice versa chatting to people from all over the world every week is just amazing as a child i couldn't color outside the lines and cranes had to be in order yeah i'm still like that now yana <laughs> I'm still like that as well I get really miffed if I go outside the lines it really bothers me and I get really annoyed if my pencils are out of order as well <laughs> it's funny how these little um foibles stay with you as you get older isn't it you all are such enablers this Jada yeah I know it's so bad Ah. Sandra's mum's colouring is part of her cancer treatment. Oh, bless her. All the best for a very speedy and good recovery. Colouring will do her so much good, bless her. So while we're still in this area, I'm just going to nudge this round. Um, I didn't glaze underneath um, this little toucan earlier, I don't think. So I'm just going to smooth over while I've got this aquamarine in my hand. I think I'd glazed over some of it under here, but not all of it. I hadn't gone down underneath his tummy. So there's that little bit under his foot that I chickened out of with the water brush. So I'll just use the pencil to go into there. 
and then again under here where we've got a couple of little patchy bits just the glazing over with the prisma just makes such a difference so I can see that I've got a little bit of this tone under here as well so I'm just going to add a little bit of a base of this and then nudge over into the peacock blue so a little bit of peacock blue coming now so we have probably about five more minutes and um, before I'm going to love you guys and leave you guys for the day so I will jump on again with you guys next weekend and just remember start thinking for me about anything you want to put to Johanna on the 1st of September because before we know it that will be here so if you have any questions find the events tab and just add a little comment in there for me and I can start to collate them and then we can get as many of you guys involved as we can in that live stream so let's push a bit of that into there as well and then we're going to switch out into that lovely Indian throne blue got to go now take care Angela so Indian throne blue it has been a lovely afternoon Donna I'm just checking that spider's still in the corner yes it is I shall uh, get Catherine all over that as soon as I've finished I'll be like oh it's been an eight eight legged monster in the top corner that's been torturing me since I've noticed it even though it hasn't moved a muscle since I did notice it so will you be colouring something during the live yes Fran we're going to be doing more of this page so this is going to be a full page colour along that I do with you guys um, I may do something different on some of my other socials at some point next week though so keep an eye out see how the old work week's going and if uh, if it goes okay then I may well pop and do something different then but we'll see so I'm pushing a little bit harder with this one under here because we've got a bit patchy um, same as under, underneath this bit so I'm just being a little more heavy handed with this lovely blue just to smooth all of that out and then we will pop back on with the dark green so 908 be exciting to see a new page yes definitely he's still watching says Donna yeah he is <laughs> what Sylvie's saying it's been fun you're off to Canada for holes lucky you where are you going how wonderful how about the live with Johanna I don't know what the format of it's going to be yet Josephine um I'm possibly going to suggest to her that it might be fun if I colour one of the pages that I picked up from her um event down in London a couple of weeks ago while we're speaking um, I had thought I was going to do the whole thing interview style putting questions and things to her but I'll see what she wants to do I'm absolutely easy so I'm happy to do what she wants to do if we end up doing some colouring it means I'm not quite dying in front of the camera for as long because you guys know that I <laughs> don't like front of camera stuff <laughs> thanks for the lesson says Louise glad I found you I'm glad you found me as well Louise thank you for coming What's Jada saying? Should we make sure we eat and drink beforehand or wear bibs because there'll be plenty of laughter? All of the above. I'll make sure I'm wearing a bib as well, a discreet one. <laughs> oh dear. Lots of laughter. That's the one thing about these sessions. We do laugh a lot, don't we? <laughs> so parrot green again. I'm going to pick up under here into this lightest area. Oh, that's what you meant, a page from the new book. Yeah, maybe so. We'll see what she wants to do. She may not be ready to um, to do live colouring in the new book quite yet, but we'll see what she wants to do. I'll leave it up to her. Bless her. So let's get this bit sharpened up. So yeah, last couple of minutes of the live, you guys, before I love you and leave you for the week. So the next time you see this picture, the background will be finished, um, apart from any... Um, dots and bits of um, white pen and stuff that I decide to add on um, afterwards but the, the bulk part of this page will be all finished up so um, if you're colouring along with me um, your homework or mission should you choose to accept it is to crack on with your background and get ready for next Sunday I might need a raincoat then says Jada <laughs> Yeah, I'm hoping it won't be, it won't descend into hysteria, but you never know. <laughs> so, aquamarine. 
this is my first live but be going on youtube shortly be prepared i'd wear your raincoat then um jada because there is always a lot of random conversation and giggles on most of the live streams that we do as well as random conversations about all sorts of things so yeah get your raincoat at the ready <laughs> so just on with aquamarine so it's a little more patchy than I would like down here. It's fine. It just means that I'll be pushing slightly harder with the glaze over layer just to smooth all of this out. So again, using that pencil on the side in circular motions and you can just see it's starting to smooth all those wrinkles away. I might put a little bit more of the um, aquamarine through there actually. Thanks for the warnings, Jada. <laughs> Yeah. Right, you guys, we're just about under the hour and a half now, so I don't want to uh, tempt fate and uh, have myself unceremoniously booted off the stream because you know what it can be like at times. So this is where we have got to. So this will all be finished the next time you see it. And then um, next week, because this is a mirror image page, it's likely that I will... I've done one half and I will then show you the other, which I'm hoping will then mean that we have time to get this finished over the next two weekends. So yeah, um, it will be Prismacolor for the rest of this, I think. If I'm gonna do any ink tents, it might be on these frogs, possibly, but I haven't decided what I'm doing yet, so we'll see. But yeah, that's the rest of the page. So if you're following along, don't be shy, show as your work in progress pictures and tag me in because I love to see them. Thank you for your company this afternoon. It's been good fun. I'm going to drink the rest of my coffee, get my lovely wife to deal with the fanged beast in the corner above my desk <laughs> before I lose sight of it. And then I'll see you guys again next week, a Sunday. So you're very, very welcome. Thanks, guys. So I'm just going to take you out of my phone stand so I can end the live stream. And I'll see you guys again soon. So if there are any comments I've missed or questions, um, you may find that I'm responding to comments and questions in a couple of hours time. I always upload straight to YouTube afterwards um, once I've posted this video. So if you see me responding later on, it's just because I'm scrolling back to make sure that I haven't missed any of you lovely people. So thank you for joining me. Um, and to all my sisters for turning up. Love you all. And I will see you again very, very soon. So it's bye from me. Bye for now.